Think so? No, for real. Back up. It's Thursday. I need to get my closets and cocktails on. How about you? Right. Closets and cocktails. All right, let's cheers first. Cheers. Cheers. Hopefully everybody made a blackberry vodka mojito. Oh. Not martini. <laughs> it's delicious. Good. Um, the drinks follow a trend. Two weeks ago, we were talking about snow outside, and we had the Spanish coffee. Warm, warm, filled you up. It was great, uh, but definitely something you would want to have in front of a fireplace. And uh, I feel the need to be on the beach right now. It feels like beach, doesn't it? It does. It feels That's... good. We've had a touch of warmer weather, but it was not warm today. No. Um, I think maybe maybe Tuesday was a warm weather. 60s next week. What's so we're drinking these from next, yes. for the 60s of next week. Yes, and uh, I love it. I love I love I love the work that you put into the drinks of the day, drinks of the week, mm -hmm. and uh, I look forward to my Thursday nights. Good. Every other Good. Thursday. Our regular bartender is. Golfing. Someplace, so, someplace much so warmer. He's not, hopefully he's not in a beach because he's in trouble if his fall is in the beach. But well, uh, oceanfront property in Arizona. Yes, yes. Well, so I had to make them. So I'm glad you like them. Yeah, they're great. I love it. So, okay. I'm John Crable. This is Bertie Brennan of where Bertie Brennan Custom Closets and Organizing. That's right, and we've been holding these closets and cocktails. This is the fifth episode so Good far. Fun. We've talked about everything. We've been in pantries. We've talked about clutter. We've talked about, well, last, last two weeks ago we talked about paper. Paper. And we just talked about the problems with paper. As I like to term it, mold paper, mold problems. <laughs> <laughs> I've only had one sip. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, not multiples. No, no, no. Uh, mo paper, mo problems. Um, and we we already talked about some of the the emotional parts about paper, right? Kids' papers, right? You can't get rid of anything. Some people can't get rid of anything. You actually had the the, the really good idea about you roll them up and put them in cereal boxes. To no, get rid I said of them. do not do that. Oh, I thought you said <laughs> do that. Oh. No, you have to teach the kids that they can't keep it all, uh, and to teach the kids, uh, you have. Let them make some decisions. So we care about the kids' feelings. We do. Okay. Well, you you want to teach them so that they can grow up and know yeah. purging, keeping a responsible amount. So just a side note here. Uh, I have three boys, 12, 12, and 9. For all intents and purposes, they're all teenagers at this point in time. It's really scary. Uh, and But they, they have different traits. Right? So the older two, actually Jared, the middle one, he doesn't really care. Like, if it's an A, if it's an F, just like, it's a piece of paper, just get it out. Like, I, I don't want it anymore. My little one, James, uh, had a stack of papers on the island, and I came down and was like, say, hey, buddy, what's, what's going on with this stuff? And he said, oh, that's the stuff I brought home last Friday. You can look at it and get rid of it. Good for him. That was a proud and burning moment right there. <laughs> that was a proud moment. Uh, you can't keep it all. No. Once you keep it all, nothing has value. And he's in third grade too, so like the amount of papers coming home is a lot. A lot. A lot. They do anyway. decrease as they get older. Yeah. Well, by the time they're in sixth grade, I never see any papers anymore. So it's like, oh yeah, I turn that in. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so anyway, we're getting a little bit on track. So uh, we talked about some of the pa uh, problems with paper just stacking up. Uh, we actually have some statistics. Right? And we look at it from, I know, a business perspective. I don't even want to imagine what it is from a personal perspective. But I know that you had a couple nuggets to drop on it, us. It, in looking at it, it's just incredible. The um, one of, out of every 20 documents is lost. Approximately 25 hours are spent in the workplace recreating each lost document. Mm -hmm. A company with a thousand workers wastes 2.5 to 3.5 each year looking for information that doesn't exist. 2.5 million. 2.5 to 3.5 million. And then not finding the information that does 
and recreating the information that can't be found. So let, let's talk a little bit about uh, people working remotely, just, just real quick. You would think that the efficiency or productivity would go up, right? Because maybe we're not dealing with as many hard, hard paper uh, copies. But we also talked about last time that people like that have something in their hand and the fact that if, if you and I are working remotely, maybe I don't trust you to have it, the right documentation. You don't trust me to have the right documentation. So we have three sets of the documentation. Yeah, yeah, it's an issue. Yeah, so that's just from a business perspective. And I know we have a lot of small businesses that engage here and watch. So we wanted to talk about that. But let's, let's go to the, the personal, right? You walk into your house, you have a stack of mail that might be sitting there. We, let, let's talk about some of those things. And the first part is just tax time, right? Tax time is coming up. So this is gonna be about solutions for paper tonight. So let's, let's have some solutions when it comes to tax time. What are your thoughts? Just have one place where all the tax documents go. And then you have to have that little bit of discipline that when you get something in the mail and it has to do with taxes, you don't put it down and think, I'll get to it later. Because putting it down just starts that next pile. It can be you know, an accordion file and that you can have it divided out. It can just be a two-pocket two folder. I love this one. It has mm. different sections. So if you have you know, the different things that have to do with real estate or banking, or you get the, the mortgage interest, you can divide it out. I'm sure the accountant would love that. But just it can just be a simple two-pocket folder. And that two-pocket folder or hanging folder can stay with you all year. Mm -hmm. So that if you get random things through the year, you think, oh, this, has, this is going to support doc, my tax documents. You, just, you drop it in. So one place. So I have a separate grouping of these. And I generally, I have to scan everything in, right? I have to send it to the account or something uh, and go about it that way. But I also, I, I know I still have the paper copies of this, of like 2016 tax returns. How far back do you have to go with taxes? Different accounts will tell you different things. Okay. So I always say check with your account. The most I've ever heard is seven. I really think the statute of limitations, I believe, is three. Okay. But then there's loopholes. Yeah. So check with your own accountant, but... Um, yeah, the last two years we haven't even gotten paper copies of our returns. He puts it on the cloud yep. somewhere, sends the supporting documents back. So let me ask you a question. Is it silly of me to keep still have my paper copies? As long as you have digital and you can reproduce them, they're backed up. Yeah. You don't need the paper copies. Okay. Backing up. What, you, what, what does that mean? Just like on a file folder on my desktop? What, what no, specific? No, no. Um, you, it could be an external hard drive, it could be a thumb drive, it could be, uh, you just want it somewhere else. So if your okay. computer crashes, you can plug in, um, you know, a cloud backup, a thumb drive, anything. Okay, so that makes and sense. Them. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. Um, how, how do you deal with trying to manage the, the timely flow of it, right? Like we normally get our W-2s or whatever pretty quickly, pretty easily, but then we get all like the medical bills and stuff like that, that just kind of, it's a steady flow. Are you just saying everything needs to go in the one folder and you just keep adding to it time after time? Yes, until about 25 pieces of paper. Oh, okay. Because that, being organized means being able to find it. Once you get past that 25 pieces of paper, you're looking through too much to find what you want. And that's when you make those more specific categories. So you might have a hanging folder, but then have manila folders in there. If you have medical that deals with taxes, yeah. then, then you're gonna divide that out. Okay, so something like this would work. Perfect. For a lot of people. Perfect. And for a lot of people, you want to gather it all first and then scan it before you send it. Okay. Because if you scan it as you bring it in, then there's always that question, well, did I, did I get this, did I scan it? 
you, you don't want to make more work for yourself by having to go to the computer. Did I skip? it? Is it in there? Well, and what you're talking about there too is batching your work, right? Batching the work, yeah. So if, if you do a little bit time after time after time, it actually takes up more time than if you just sat down and did it for half an hour. It can, if you have to keep double checking yourself. Which you probably would, because you want to yeah. remember if you did it in the yeah. first place. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. So let's move on to just random papers as they come into the house, right? I know you have a different filing system here, which maybe this is a little bit more... I don't know, what's the right word for it? Upscale, professional, organized? Um, it's just one version of a literature sorter. Okay, so let, let's talk more about this. Um, I like it, it's from Ikea, it's compact. And That's a key, Ikea? This is Ikea. Oh. It's metal, just snaps together. All right. It's um, pretty reasonable. Um, but you can have a court, like I said, accordion files, you can have, um, this is, this is another literature sorter. It just sorts things vertically. You know, some people see things better when they're vertical. Some people, when they go horizontal, they just don't see them. So you gotta know what works for you. Uh, you have to. So this has three sections. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have an easy place to label. Uh, okay. So that's one great so that's thing about like this. Well, I was trying to. I was trying to think. They, they take about the same amount of space. They do. So it's it's not necessarily one is better, it's just different preferences. It is different preferences. And this can go on its side, so it can be vertical. Is it not vertical now? No, the papers are laying horizontal. Oh, I get it. All right. But it's got a great place to label, and it, it can sit up and your papers sit. So, so. Do, you look, do you look at any of this and just say it's graduating degrees of the same problem, or graduating solutions for the same problem. Like how do we move from this, or let's start here. How do we move from this, to this, to this, to this, to this? Your papers tell you that. You know, how many- well, Hold on, my papers don't tell me anything. <laughs> they don't speak to me the way they do to you. Okay. They do, you just have to listen. <laughs> so gather up all your papers. Okay. And be brutal, let go of the ones you don't need. The 80-20 rule applies to paper. You know, if you could find it somewhere else, let it go. Um, if What's the worst thing that could happen if you don't have it? If it's not too bad, just let it go. You know, keeping all the papers that don't have value keep you from finding the papers that do have value. Right, and that goes back to the efficiency that we talked about. Okay. So let go of the papers um, and go through each one, just the one on top, and make a decision. Uh, what I find is, if you can't make a decision, you just set it down and that's the start of your next pile. So, bring all your papers together in a big stack and go through them one by one. And decide, can I let it go? If you can let it go, do you have to shred it or just recycle it? So, make a decision on the first paper. And if you do need to keep it, you're going to just start making piles and do a little post-it. And just write a key word of why you need to keep this paper. Okay. So then at the end, when you've gone through, you know, all the papers on your desk and you've got them in paper, the, the ones you need to keep, you've got them in piles, then um, go gather the rest of the paper. You know, the paper that's on the kitchen table, the paper that's on the nightstand, and do the same thing. So then when you have the papers that you need to keep, I like hanging folders, but it depends. You know, if you have... Well, first of all, if you have a pile that has one piece of paper in it, you know, can that title be more general and yeah. it go into yeah. another pile? And again, if you have a pile that has 25 papers or more, then you need to um, break that down and be more mm -hmm. specific with that one. Could, could you tell me how you got more to this 25 number? Yep. Um, being organized is just being able to find something. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter. It's being able to find it when you need it. And looking through more than 25 is too much okay. to find that piece of paper or find that thing that you want. Do you want to, you want to get on the camera? You want to say hi? You Are sure? You sure? We got a little helper today. 
And you've been playing with paper the entire night. <laughs> Coloring pictures, right? And what did you do with the drinks? You counted blackberries, didn't you? <laughs> so she was my helper, bartender helper. Um, so once you have the piles, you, you, you have a, a good amount of, of papers in them, then you, then you figure out how you keep them. If you have 10 piles and it's something that you're afraid to put in a file cabinet because they're active, you need to see them. You're afraid if you put them in a file cabinet, they'll, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Uh -huh. Then you create, you know, you have a literature sorter. You have a literature sorter. If you have 10, you would get two of these. And you would just label each one. Okay. I think of this kind of um, holder as like for projects. Yeah, I can get that. So, so I came over here tonight, right? I have my briefcase, and I have—I don't know if you'd like this or not. I have ten Manila folders in there, but it's all for a category of the closets. Yeah. Right. So you know, one is financials, one is. Uh, client paperwork, uh, one is receipts, you know, all this type of stuff. So your papers told you those categories. Okay. Kind of. Okay. All right. Maybe the papers are talking to me. It has nothing to do with the mojitos. It's, it's, it's the papers are talking. Um, but at least for me, I, I and, and this is when I go on jobs. This is when I work. This is when I travel. I feel like I have the entire office in a briefcase. And if there's something that's important in there, then it's with me. Am I on so, the right track with that? Absolutely. Or? Absolutely. So you've divided your papers up into categories. They've divided themselves, they apparently. Have. <laughs> and you are put them in a, a vehicle that makes sense to you, um, a manila folder, and you put them in your briefcase. So for me, when, when I have those piles, I put them in hanging folders and I put them in a, unless it's a project, I, I use these things for ongoing active projects. Okay. So, but the papers I just need to keep, I put in, um, a, in a file cabinet and I do, do you know what I mean by straight line? Like the tabs are made to, to go staggered. Mm -hmm. You don't like that? No. Okay. No, because if you stagger them, and it's beautiful for five minutes after you make it, and then as soon as you need to add a category or one category no longer has value, the stagger is messy, oh, and you don't okay. want to have to keep cleaning it up. So I do straight line, uh, straight line filing, and I do it by categories. So if you open a file drawer, there is going to be tabs on the left, but that's one category. Okay. And they're alphabetized there. And then there's going to be the next category, you know, um, in the middle. And they're alphabetized. Because, again, I don't want to have to look more through more than 25 file folders to find the file I want. The rule of 25. Yeah, that's okay. my rule. I like it. It seems to work. Um, okay, well, I, I have an example for you in the 25. Is... I just have envelopes inside my briefcase, right? I have envelopes of receipts and bank deposit slips. And uh, recently, I went through and separated January and February okay. into different envelopes. It's about 25 per month. And I mean, I, th I think you're right. Like, uh, it was too much to have a stack this thick of receipts. Mm -hmm. So you needed to break it up a little bit. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Okay. It's your 12 envelopes in one. There you go. And, and actually, there's actually 13. So you can put the ones that you haven't filed away in that oh. front one. Okay. It's really good. All right, I like that. And that's, I mean, this is almost, it feels more day-to-day -day here, mm -hmm. whereas you said this might be more project-based. Mm -hmm. For me, yeah. For you. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good. Um, we had a visitor, yes. right? So let's talk about kids' stuff now. Kids' stuff. Because kids' stuff isn't gonna fit here for the most. I mean, they got some big stuff, big projects that they come home with. I'm not. I'm not necessarily seeing how you would keep kids' paper stuff on the table here. Right, wrong. What should we do? I 
like to have a designated spot again, yeah. just um, a, a basket that's big enough that it will hold their papers, okay. that you can enjoy them, put them in the basket, and then maybe at the end of every grading season, mm -hmm. you go through them and you keep the special ones and you let them pick the special ones. Um, and you can put those back in the basket and then you add to it. Then at the end of the year, those special ones might have changed a little bit. Um, and then that's where I think a two pocket folder is really good. Uh, limit the number of special papers for the year to a two pocket folder. What do you mean a two pocket folder? You wonder what a two pocket folder is? I don't know, like this? Like the this, one? only it's not divided. Oh, okay. Kind of here, pocket there. And then, like if they do that big science fair project, right? take a picture of it. And if they get a ribbon, you can put the picture and the ribbon in here. Okay. And and let them learn that you you can't keep everything. So if you give them, I say give them a physical limit, which would be this as a vehicle, or a number. And that I kind of do that with organizing different parts of the house too. Um, so that they can just keep weeding down until they get to that number for what fits here. Um, there are great picture frames that open that you can put multiple pieces of art in. So mm -hmm. when they bring home those beautiful pieces of art, yeah. it, it will keep them nice. I think you can <laughs> put about 25 in there. Of course. <laughs> That's just coincidence. Of course. Um, it's not a coincidence. I'm sure you blame them. <laughs> and then <clears throat> there's also going to be kids' papers or, or kids' um, school papers, things from school that have to be signed and sent back. So you need a place for kids' things that need to go back to school, too. You know, I have noticed, especially in <coughs> James's stuff, and I mean, it makes sense to be in third grade a little bit younger, that. The teachers have labeled stuff, right? They open the the folder and saw this is like leave it home and bring back to school, or you know, and maybe it's a signature or maybe it's something else. But I mean, they've already started to get a little bit of that at school, probably. And if you think about it, the teacher has twenty five students, right, <laughs> with twenty five papers. So there's five hundred twenty five pieces That's of paper. Lot. That is a lot. It's a lot. So she has to be organized. So it's good that she's teaching the kids to get yeah. organized. I don't think that used to happen. I mean, I think that's new, relatively new realization that organization with students just helps, helps them study, well, helps and, them excel. And, you know, so many of the lessons that we learn as kids, right, we just unlearn them as time goes by. But if you think about it, the point of having the kid at school is so that they can focus and enjoy whatever the content is, whatever the learning is for that day. And if they're coming home with stacks of paper like this, they're more focused on how heavy their backpack is than what they actually learned that day. Same thing with at, at, at home, right? If you walk in from the mailbox and you have a stack of mail this thick, you know, you're not going through it. You're throwing it down and then, and then going about your day. And that's where bills can be mixed missed yeah. and then you get late phase and all that stuff yeah can't have that no no it's important so okay so as we wrap up the paper conversation we have learned that we have the rule of 25 right once it gets too big we need to do something about it be more specific okay be more specific We've looked at the different levels, right? And how we can go from more day-to-day -day or, or filing and, and keeping it efficient, right? To something that might work better if it's bigger for you. Or, and just a style or, you know, just what works. Vertical, horizontal, um, more translucent so you can see what's in it. How long do you think that going through papers would take somebody? In an average house, right? You come oh, over to current papers. Current, yeah. So, like you said, that to create these stacks, right? You put a post-it note on them and stuff. That's like that. all the stuff that's accumulated. Okay, so how? But I mean, am I talking like I'm going to take an hour out of my Saturday to do this? What, what do you think is appropriate? I, I think once once 
once you've determined, and we didn't really talk about this today, I think we've talked about it in the past, you create a little retention schedule. So if you have magazines that come into the house, you know where you're gonna put them and you know how many you're gonna keep. Right. Okay. If a bank statement comes in the house, you know how many you're gonna keep and you know just where it goes. So it just takes minutes a day. And if you have a really busy week, you can stack all your mail in one spot knowing that in 15 minutes you can take care of it yeah. because you've made those decisions. You don't have to make a decision yeah. every time you look at something. We have talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not going into it with um, uncertainty or trying to make up the rules or trying to figure it out as you go. Right. Yeah. You make a retention plan with all that current stuff that comes in. Okay. All right, I like that, I like that. Now, I will tell you, I kind of gravitate more towards this than this. I used to have one of these in my office and it was the one that got taller as you- Yes. I just would have a lot of stuff in there and it eventually started to curl because <laughs> I just kept throwing more stuff in there and it, it just didn't work for me. Did you know specifically what you were putting in it? Or well, it was, it, it, it needed, can't be just a holding spot. It was a holding spot. Okay. And so what it ended up being was, I mean, it was probably six, seven, eight of these deep. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be so great. I'll have I'll have one folder for all my committee meetings and blah, 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 all these different things. And then I would get the minutes from the last meeting and just put it right there. Cause it's like, eh, somebody's gonna ask me about it. I'll just keep it. I like three ring binders too. Okay. For like, if you have a committee. Oh, okay, okay. So, so you know, just think about the specific things. And if you have a three ring binder, these are the best because if you you want to add something, but you don't have a hole punch or you, they have pockets, so very quickly you can still have it in the category you need it. But um, and then think, oh, I'm gonna punch holes in it later and never do. <laughs> but same idea. So it's just discipline. Um, you don't want a holding spot. You want a place for everything. Yeah. I think we buried the lead on that holding spot. They had to watch till the end. There you go. Uh, okay, so we're gonna wrap up the paper solutions conversation for tonight. We've had a blackberry vodka mojito. mojito. It's delicious too. I'm <laughs> loving it. The bad part is I have blackberries and mint left over. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've heard from viewers about some of the other things that they want to see. And one of the things that they wanted to learn more about was laundry rooms. Another spot that becomes a holding area. Yeah, it does. It does. So, so let's tackle that conversation next. Okay. Laundry rooms. Solutions. Solutions. And we will be in a laundry room next time. Okay. It will make, only make sense, right? It only makes sense. Okay. Uh, and we'll discuss so, so, some of the issues and some of the solutions to the laundry room problems. And until then, uh, get you a recipe for <laughs> a blackberry vodka mojito. We'll provide it. Yeah. I'll, we'll send it out tomorrow. But you should mix one up for the next time you have to store paper. I will make so. it better. And yeah. put music on. There you go. <laughs> Whatever well, it takes. I like it. All right, cheers. Cheers. Have a good night. See you in two weeks.